Today on Eric Borderline Ruin Something, I've got my welder out. All in the name of performing something I've been wanting to do to a bike for a really long time, and our subject of interest, of course, is the GT. The subject, the subject in question, the title of this video, converting from using these, what we call in the BMX world, 990 mounts for V-brake, rim brakes. Uh, other people would just call them uh, posts for cantilever or V-brakes. I wanna go from that to a disc brake wheel setup on this. If you caught yesterday's upload where I talked about why this fork, what we're, what we're doing here, basically trying to build my own version of Squid's Shred to Ed's adult 26 inch BMX bike. Most bigger BMX bikes just use a normal rim brake. The Shred to Ed's uses a disc brake. I'm trying to emulate my own version of the Shred to Ed's, therefore disc brake. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Now, a partial catalyst for this, actually there's two catalysts for this. Uh, one being, I had planned on doing this to the dirt cheap gravel bike years ago. If you go back to one of the uh, like bike roundup uploads when I still had the Norco Rideau dirt cheap gravel, dirt cheap gravel bike, I actually had made this at an old employer uh, out of some scrap steel. We cut out a shape for a IS, IS mount to put a disc brake onto that bike. I never got around to it. So the adapter, the weld on adapter, it still has been floating around here and it's just kind of been like sitting as this setup waiting to go on something. So I obviously want to use it. This seems like a good opportunity to do so. Also, as many, as many, many, many of you love to keep bringing up in the comments, yes, the split in the seat tube is still there. You know, I'm a little disappointed in your guys' concern of a split in a seat tube that's sandwiched between two structures with a really long seat post in it. Literally, like, I, I just don't see anything uh, catastrophic or anything at all happening, but to appease the crowd and do something that I planned on doing anyway, we're gonna weld that. We're gonna like plug weld that back up. Drill each end, weld it up. Seat post probably won't go back in, so I'll have to like sand it and ream it. Anyway. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, let's, uh, let's clean this up and get it to a spot where it could actually be welded on. And I'll say the same thing about the frame where it's gonna go on. All the paint kind of needs to come off that area so we can actually weld. I've got the seat tube, but uh, I've got the paint from the seat tube removed. I've got the paint from seat stay removed. I removed some from the chain stay as well because I anticipate having to add in some bracing in here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like, I'm gonna punch, center punch the ends of the crack here so that we can easily drill it out. There's our crack. Gonna drill out either end of it, and then we'll uh, <laughs> weld it back together. Uh, okay, so full disclosure, I have not welded in probably two years, maybe three. On Patreon, as always, I shared something that I didn't share with anybody until now, and that it's that I went and uh, bought my new super ugly welding mask. And uh, now let's see if we can burn this place. Pass. 
Power went out. Okay, I'm gonna have to use power directly from the house. Otherwise, well, this is just gonna keep happening. Oof. I think it looked better before. No. That went about as good as I expected it to. Um, having not welded for a long time, I forgot that it's like, maybe don't lay a bead for quite as long as I did and burnt a little hole through it. And I was like, oh, right. You have to like be patient and take your time. Anyway, crack, all sealed up. If you're gonna be a bad welder like me, you gotta be a half decent filer, unlike me. Um, there's still a little bit of cleaning up to do here. I don't know that I'm gonna go that deep into it. Okay, now, now for the part that I really wanted to deal with. So, my friend Clayton, he had these uh, disc 26 inch wheels that he was getting rid of, didn't want, uh, and we traded. I traded him a set of BMX handlebars for these wheels. And, uh, well, it's really gonna help with setting this up. It's really gonna help to get this on here so that it'll clear a 160 millimeter rotor. I'm just gonna bolt the caliper to the mount. I'm gonna put the wheel in, and then I'm just gonna kind of line everything up and tack it into place. And then I'll take everything off and actually weld it on. I'm gonna just tighten the caliper down onto the wheel to kind of hold it in place. And that'll be my magnet for this endeavor. Well, that went about exactly as I sort of predicted and expected it to. Jumping back into welding after about three years, not practicing, hoping that it would just go perfect out of the gate, definitely running into trouble while working on it, scrambling to fix that problem before I made it worse, figuring it out, welding it on, and then like very, very, very much trying to hide how bad the welds actually were with grinding and filing. Case in point. All in all, just kind of a fun way to like breathe even more life back into an old frame, especially one that has been cracked and was probably gonna get turfed. The conversion is kind of the thing that had me like the most ooh, kind of up in arms, a little bit nervous about all the ideas that I have about this thing. Now it's done. The wheel spins freely with a 160 millimeter rotor in there. It's good feeling, even though it's not a roll of dimes. Let's just say there'll be like a fair amount of high build primer in that area to try and like. I did find a fork, a BMX company, Cult, makes a dirt jump mountain bike fork quite a bit lower than this one. They say it fits a 2.4 tire. This one would fit literally a fat bike tire. So I'm like, gonna bring that front end down a little bit. I also got a set of handlebars from there as well, but I won't tell you more about those until they're here. Yeah, I guess that's everything for today. Mm -hmm.